This here is the first time in 13 years of modifying shipping containers that I've used a batten style insulation. We've gone back and forth in the office about 20 times on how we're going to achieve a well insulated mineral wall system, a wall system inside of the shipping container and have the wall system breathe properly and not hold back a whole bunch of moisture in between there. How do we deal with the vapor barrier? How do we vent the wall cavity? What are we gonna do? Is this actually gonna work? We don't really know, but the customer is always right. Before I take you down the rabbit hole of how we ended up with this final wall system, it's important to understand the backstory. So the design criteria from our customer is that we are not allowed to use spray foam. They want the widest possible interior width and they need a plywood line so they can mount anything anywhere inside of this thing. Our suggested envelope was to use our steel stud brackets to use inch and five eight steel studs an inch away from the wall, spray foam it with two inches of two pound closed cell spray foam. Then we can plywood line that and finish it with our PVC interior wall covering. At this point, when the customer does not allow us to use spray foam, I usually walk away. But this is a past customer, and even worse, I grew up right across the street from this guy, so I had to take on this project. So if spray foam was the only issue, I would then suggest a hybrid framing system, which utilizes steel studs and rigid foam on the walls, and then we can use rigid foam, wood studs, and mineral wool insulation in the ceiling, and that's gonna give us that common airspace, but Rigid foam has the same risk of HFCs being inside of there, so we're now stuck with steel studs and mineral wool insulation. At this point, most people on the planet would just revert back to traditional framing methods. They'd use wood framing against the wall, fill the cavity with fiberglass insulation, vapor barrier the entire thing with poly, and then plywood line the interior. But I've seen firsthand these systems fail and be full of mold. So together, let's figure out a better way to do this. So this specific modification is going to be utilized at a hockey rink. It's gonna have a huge chiller mounted on the roof. It's gonna be super heavy and that's where the shipping container comes in handy. And then through all the walls, we're gonna have exhaust fans and intake dampers and electrical chase. And then we have our other ports where all of the hydronic lines will head out to the hockey rink's concrete floor slab and then return back here to get pre-chilled again. And we started off with our steel stud brackets and an inch and five eighths steel stud, but that got thrown out the window and now we're going with our steel stud brackets and a two and a half inch steel studs so what we think we can do here is we can take the rigid mineral wool insulation we can stuff that right in there now we're going to have a huge thermal bridge we're going to have all the cold on the cold side of this insulation be touching this steel stud it's going to be coming right through and then touching here and so that that thermal bridge right there is, is not good, but it's really all we got. So what we're gonna do is instead of putting a poly vapor barrier right against this face here, we're going to be using a, a, a zip sheeting system and we're gonna be installing it kind of inside out. We're gonna be installing it with the green face against the stud and the brown face up against the ceiling. And we're gonna be able to seal those seams as best we can between each of the sheeting. And that's a, a water and an air barrier on those zip sheeting systems. And then that is going to allow us to achieve our vapor barrier. And we're gonna leave all of the vents that are the stock shipping container vents that are in this container. And that's gonna allow being up high and not down low. Uh, we looked at some architectural articles and stuff. And a lot of times for flat roof systems, that's actually what they do is they let the humidity out through like a one-way valve throughout the day. And then at night, they close that. So you don't pull any humidity back into your wall system. Figure maybe that's going to work here. But because we have a, an insulation that doesn't wick moisture, that isn't prone to mold growth, and we have steel studs, there really isn't much in this wall system that can go too wrong. It's not gonna be the best R value. It's gonna take a bit to heat this thing in the winter, but stuff that's inside of here does actually release a ton of heat. So this is what we're doing. This is what we're going for. It's all new to us. Uh, I really want to try this zip sheeting system and the zip R sheeting system because we've come up with our exterior studding brackets where we can frame the outside of shipping containers. And that is going to change everything. Now we need to learn traditional methods of construction so that we can frame out windows and doors just to wood sheeting, just like every other home in the planet. But if I'm gonna learn that, I'm not just gonna learn the way that my grandpa did it. I'm gonna do it the best way with the best technology and the best materials that are available to us. So if you guys follow along, you'll be able to see us learn that and learn with us. Building envelopes are important. It's super important up here in Canada. For us, it's a matter of life or death to have a very well insulated wall cavity.
So the boys have already got a running head start here, but the first place you start is with your steel stud brackets. So you install these to the top tubing on both sides, and then you can continue with your corner casting covers around the end wall. And then where these top tracks are, we'd match that at the bottom. But in this instance, we need to frame and insulate the ceiling of this container first, because we have to get into where the walls are to screw upwards into the cross studs. So with these steel stud brackets, we actually don't use any on the end wall. We have a couple special profiles that we could try uh, gluing and sticking on there. But these corner casting covers are set up so that you don't actually need them. The wall studs on your end wall will hold everything up and in place once you get going. But there is this little slot right here and that's where your stud goes and gets slotted in there. And that lets you know, you put a screw right through there that you've done it in the right place. And also what this does is it gives you access in this inside corner. So if you're spray foaming, like I suggest, now your spray foam gun can fit in there and get yourself a very nice vapor barrier. Uh, but in this instance, because we have our mineral wall insulation, we can actually just stuff it in there. I guess that's one area that might not have too much ventilation in behind the insulation. Another thing is we're using two and a half inch steel studs. We have to use these steel studs because it's about two inches between the, uh, the C portion of the steel stud and that's allowing us to stuff the two inch rigid mineral wool right inside there. And we're just gonna insulate as we frame. We feel this is gonna be the best method to achieve our goals here. The guys already have the first three sections done. It's a good time just to jump in here and look and see what they're doing. So we're using the two and a half inch steel studs on the roof as well as the side walls. And we're using two of them at every scene. So we're going 24 inches on center and we're basically putting the two steel studs together, the two C channels basically form an I beam. So we're, we are doing a bit further of a span, but we got double the, the weight bearing capacity here. And then another thing, to stop cold air from going right in between each of these studs, we are caulking in between each one of them to stop that air transfer. There is gonna be a whole bunch of cold transferring through here anyway, but whatever, that's the way it is. But it is looking great and it's actually working a lot better than I expected. And one key feature here to notice is if you look up, you can see a common airspace inside of here. So a big problem would be is if this stud was sitting right up against the roof corrugation, and you had all these individual air pockets and all the upper corrugations, none of that can breathe and you might get super human air pocket here and then be perfectly fine here. So if we can make this one common airspace similar to your attic of your home where that's all ventilated and it continues down the sides behind these studs and then hopefully that will all breathe through the stock shipping container vents that are on this container. And another thing, if we jump over, you can see because we've done welding on this container, which I hate, we've now burnt the paint and actually even the caulking up here. So we're gonna want to apply a zinc coating on there to get the uh, sacrificial layer back to that. That's gonna be exposed to moisture all throughout this container's life. And with the heat in here and cold outside, I'm just nervous to see how much condensation is actually going to happen in here, but it's a great test and customer's always right. One quick thing I noticed is we have the insulation right up to the top 60 millimeter tubing here, if you can see that. So this insulation is cut too long. We're going to go in the middle here and cut a couple inches out of it and then we'll pull each batten back so that we get that air gap. We get one inch against that stud so that this air gap up above can flow down and share the same uh, air cavity as the wall. So it's one common airspace. So standing up here near this mineral wool insulation, my voice feels different. I feel like my ears are gonna pop, like I'm going through a valley or something in my vehicle. It's insane how much this mineral wool insulation soaks up the sound in here. And so this thing's gonna be a pretty sound deadened unit. And that's one huge advantage that this insulation has over spray foam. So many people think, Oh, spray foam, it's gonna make it super quiet in there. No, it's, it's a rigid board and it transfers the sound vibrations right through it. You need those uh, micro air gaps and that's what inside of a batten insulation really absorbs that sound and stops it from bouncing and deflecting onwards to other things like our ears. On these stock doors, we've used Container Modification World's door flashing kit. This here leaves ourselves a flange where we can stuff 
the insulation in, or what I suggest, spray foam in behind, and then we can either remove one of the sides or remove the top and slide in our interior wall covering. That gives us a beautiful finish and makes the doors work perfectly, just like stock. I came back, I think I expected the guys to use the more squishy, regular batten insulation in these doors, but it looks like they use the rigid mineral wool insulation. So it did tuck in there just nicely, but it is very tight. I think we're gonna have to, because we chose the two inch and not the inch and a half, we might have to take our knife and just chamfer the edge of the insulation a little bit just to make it easier for us to slide our interior wall covering down. But that did work. I guess there's options. This here in the voids of the door, this might leave an air gap in behind that now. That's something I don't know if I like or not, but uh, a lot of these new containers, they actually come with the stock container vents right on the doors. And if that's the case, that'll allow that cold air trap to breathe and allow the moisture out. But I guess if the doors weren't insulated, it's probably best to just fill that entire cavity full of insulation. Architects, keyboard warriors, let me know, is this going to work or is the air cavity behind there going to condensate and cause a whole bunch of container rain dripping down that shipping container door and collecting at the bottom of this flashing kit? So we're back. The guys got it all done inside of here and it is just such an eerie feeling. Uh, it's so cool and I'm excited to do this on future mods. I do want to do this with the flash and bat method. So if we did a little bit of spray foam and then this mineral wool insulation, this is going to be great for our shop where we have our video editing offices and our production offices. So we'll be able to have workstations right inside of our facility and an angle grinder or an impact driver are gonna be able to go off right beside where we're working and I bet that you'll hardly be able to hear it. It won't be disturbing enough to stop you from having a video conference call or anything, which is amazing. So this is awesome. This is new to us and I'm really excited for it. Way more excited for it than I was when I was initially talking to this customer. This rigid insulation worked very well you can see how straight this is, and this is gonna be really easy now for us to cover with our interior wall covering. So here I am rolling in. We got one board to put up now and I'll uh, pretend like I was here helping them with all of them. But yeah, the guys did a good job in here. We're still waiting on the uh, roof sheeting so we can't quite finish up, but I wanna show you exactly kind of what we did here. And so we've used a butyl sealant in between the cracks and then we've used these H clips here. They're typically used when you're uh, sheeting the roof of your home. So they'll stop the differential sagging between two sheets of plywood or OSB. Uh, when you're uh, spanning between like 224 inch on center rafters, which is similar space to this. But what we're utilizing them for is actually to purposely leave ourselves that, you know, one eighth or whatever it is gap in between the sheets. And then we can actually uh, ensure that we get our caulking in there. And then that will come right to the back side of the sheet and be our vapor barrier, a continuation of our vapor barrier. So I'll just snap all these in. And then what the guys did, you can see here on this one specific, and we'll have to do it on all of them. So when we have frames here that we need to tuck the sheet in behind, you can't get up in there and then get back down into the H clip. So we have to bend all the tabs down and just get the sheet in there and then we'll bang them back up with the hammer that I don't even know if we own. But so yeah, I'll bend those. <laughs> Ready for action. So here we'll, we'll lift her up in place. And one thing to notice here is how pretty this looks and how upset I am that it didn't get to be this nice green and, and brown uh, zip system interior uh, that we get to show off. So unfortunately we get the less cosmetic OSB side facing inwards, but it's important. The reason why we did that is because we kind of did the math on how much thermal bridging is gonna come through these C channels. And if that steel stud was touching the 
non-protected side of this, we figure that's gonna wick a bunch of moisture in here, uh, swell it, rot it, and kind of ruin the whole wall system. So potentially, if we were to frame this thing with a wood stud two by four, we wouldn't have all that thermal bridging, and we might have been able to install this where we'd have the green side inwards, uh, and it would look a lot prettier, but really it's not worth the risk at all, and we're not certain whether this whole wall system is even gonna perform the way we hypothesize it will or not, so it's uh, all a big, big test here. Yeah, good. Cool. Got her. Okay, and then that stud up top there. Oh, yeah. Lost an H clip. One thing I just noticed, uh, they started off using self-tapping screws right into the steel studs, and I noticed they were using like a, a pointy wood screw here, and he said, yeah, they learned that real quick. And I'm really surprised because these things, it was amazing how fast it just tapped right into there and got into that steel stud. And these are the structural steel studs. They're twice as thick as the regular ones meant to just handle hanging drywall. So that's super impressive and something for, I guess, everybody to note. So show them. Boom. And so here at the, the vertical seams, not the horizontal seams, but the vertical seams, we actually cut little strips of the same uh, zip bar material and put them inside out. So we have that, uh, whatever it is, I don't know if it's like a melted plastic or what the, the surface that they have, but it's all touching each other. We have some backing here. And if we do have some awkward gaps, we can fill that also with uh, the butyl and then we'll go over it with that pressure sensitive tape. That didn't work. Now that the brown zip sheeting has arrived, they've finally been able to sheet the ceiling. And so you can see here, this is different. This is actually thicker than the green stuff. And this is meant for roof decks and stuff. So it's just thicker material, a bit more durable. And they have this all completed now. They just sheeted normally from the end and all the seams, we purposely didn't have them line up on the studs. Cause when there's two studs beside each other, a lot of times you can uh, get some shifting in there. So we, we just table sawed a strip in between and screwed up into the wood. It's kind of how we see some drywallers drywalling nowadays, but uh, if you guys think that's the wrong way of doing it, make sure you comment down below and tell me why. Another cool thing I got here is a decibel reader. So we see we just peaked it there at uh, 98 decibels, but it's really cool. We bought this very quick, got her delivered just to test like how loud it would be inside and outside. And so maybe we'll do some of those tests for you guys. So we're just inside the container and we got a whole bunch of openings in here. And if I stop talking, we hit about 37 decibels. And as soon as I go outside of here, we're about 47 in our shop. Now, I don't know if there's additional sources of sound in there or what, but it's pretty dead out there as well. But turn that, uh, turn the saw on out there. About 90, 85. Keep it running. 70, so yeah, it's good. So we drop about 15 to 20 decibels just kind of outside of the wall. I don't know if that's just blocking the, the sound from flowing right into the mic or what, but you can hear it, you can feel it. About 37 decibels. Yeah, try it. Do it again. Okay, I hit about 70 or so. Let's go uh, do that to just a regular container and see how loud it is. So here we have a non-insulated shipping container. You can feel that. Now let's go to a spray foamed one. Okay, this is funny. This is not as expected. This container here has three inches of spray foam on it. And you'd think that it would just sound so solid, but when we hit it, it sounds more hollow than the hollow container. 
and I think a lot of people confuse spray foam for being soundproof, but really it's just a rigid foam there and it transfers the vibrations right through it. So when we're hitting this steel, it just vibrates right through the foam where that, uh, that mineral wool insulation and that air gap somehow stops all that reverberation. Like normally you hit a container, it's just and it takes forever for it to finally stop reverberating, but here it's just stops immediately. So yeah, it's really cool. I bet you that air gap between the mineral wool insulation and the container is another huge uh, sound blocker. So all the vibrations that hit this wall don't transfer to the steel stud because they're not touching it and through into the, the zip R sheeting that's on the inside. We just have a couple pieces left of Reline to install and then we'll be wrapped up for this job and we'll give you the final tour. But I want to talk about this in case you're new to our channel. This is a PVC wall panel. It's a white wall panel. It's typically meant for uh, car washes and stuff. It's basically waterproof. You can pressure wash this stuff and it's just like installing vinyl siding on the side of your home. It's the same concept anyway or tin. It's J channels so you got to do your perimeter with J's and then you just Cut your panels a little bit shorter than that for expansion and contraction and just slide them in there. So the same theories that a lot of tradesmen already know. And then the stuff is, I think it's uh, three eighths of an inch thick. It's basically a whole bunch of little mini trusses in there or air cavities. And, and that helps, I guess, with the sound deadening. That helps, must provide some small amounts of R value. But the biggest thing is once you're all done with all this, it looks like you drywalled, mudded, taped, did everything, and you just skipped two, three tradesmen coming in here. You basically, once it's installed and screwed in, it's done, it looks mint. This is how these framing kits work and look once they're all dialed in. So our Reline wall panel came right up to this galvanized frame, and that foam comes right up to the inside of here. That is about as insulated as this can possibly be. I also wanna show you how the door flashing kits and wall flashing kits finished up. So now that we have our paneling inside the door, and this door will close right up and come right up to the edge of the wall flashing kit, and it's just gonna look super crisp and clean inside of this unit. These panels come in 10, 12, 16, 20 foot lengths and they also have H strips as well. So in a 40 foot shipping container, what's easiest we find is to use uh, four 10 foot lengths, where in a 20 foot container, we don't need this at all. We can install just one seamless sheet and then it's super crisp finished interior. I wanna take one moment and show off the finished envelope here, how good this looks. So we have OSB line this, and that is technically our vapor barrier, but all these reline wall panels, they're non-porous as well, so that may act as a bit of a interior vapor barrier as well. We're really curious how this envelope is going to perform, but check this out. This white interior is awesome. It's a crack-free interior, so we can move this thing around. There's gonna be a ton of weight inside. There's gonna be a ton of weight on top of this, and we're never gonna have drywall cracks, and uh, it basically looks as good as a drywalled mud and taped and painted finished interior building. One thing to note here is that before when it was just mineral wool insulation inside of here, I was not hearing any echo. But now I'm gonna play you a clip of me talking during that and then you'll be able to tell the difference, especially if you're wearing headphones, of what it sounds like now. Have you ever been in a sound deadened room before? What is this feeling? Let me know in the comments below. It feels like I'm wearing earmuffs or hearing protection or it's messing with my balance a little bit. How does that sound? What is the difference? For us here in our building, we're gonna have our video crew right inside of our shop and we're gonna to try to come up with some sort of an interior wall covering so they're not just staring at mineral wall insulation, but maybe like a perforated metal or something that will still allow the sound to get deadened into that mineral wall. Or there's different, uh, like you can do pegboard or punch plate, which is awesome for hanging things. With the punch plate finish, a cool thing would be, there's some definitely Americans that are looking for safe rooms. So uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, gun hangers or holsters or whatever you'd call them that you can hang all of your arsenal on the wall. A lot of times too, people want a little bar at the back end and then basically their trophy cabinet. But that with the mineral wall insulation inside of it to temper a building like this inside of an already tempered climate or a building that is just 
out of the sun, I think would work great. So if you are looking to insulate and heat a container in the Arctic, is this the right way for you to do it? Probably not. It's still to be tested and until I get some feedback from the customer on how this envelope performed, I'm not sure I would recommend it to people. So in areas where there's high humidity outside or extreme cold temperatures outside, if that humidity can get into your wall system, this may not be the best way to do it. I still always recommend spray foam insulation, but what would be cool is a flash and bat method where we could have a little bit of spray foam and then this mineral wall insulation, you get all of the benefits, you get the sound deadening properties of the mineral wool, the R value of the mineral wool, and you get that flawless vapor barrier from the two pound closed cell spray foam insulation. And just to reiterate why we mineral wool insulated this and did not use spray foam is because the contractor that's purchasing this unit here and outfitting everything inside of it is concerned about the spray foam. Uh, back prior to 2021, there was refrigerants inside of the foam and that was used as an expanding agent, but that's no longer used anymore. But in previous instances, that has leaked out of the foam slowly and set off the refrigerant sensors and they have leak detectors in here and it sucks when those things go off and it's just a false alarm. So they erred on the side of caution just in case for some reason we got an old batch of foam or who knows what. And so it's a great opportunity to build a video and to show people how to build this type of envelope. And we'll also be getting great feedback from the contractor and we can give that back to you in due time. We're gonna have to let this go through a few sets of seasons and we're gonna have to hear what they say because it's the second unit we've built for them already and I'm sure they're gonna build more. And when they call us back, we'll be quizzing them.